How are you, everyone? We are now back to our online service. I'm sorry for an inconvenience. I believe that it'll continue several more weeks, uh, but as we are doing our service through online, I also seek a special grace and mercy from God. God will teach us, continuously teach us and strengthen our faith. Hear the, hear the message today. The sermon today, um, I'd like to begin with these questions. These days, what bothers you most? Was, uh, what, sorry, what suppresses you? Throughout your life, what did you uh, suffer most from? Was that poverty? Was that a lack of education? Your, was that uncomfortable leg or arm, any part of your body that you're born with? continuous failures in business, or uh, your loan, your debt, or is that your uh, broken family? What was that? If you feel like you don't have any, or you have some, but you don't feel like they're serious, they're okay, then I think you are so lucky. Many people in the world, their situations are different, very various, but no matter how rich they are, how uh, popular they are, how high they are, how low they are, they experience their limitations in some sense, physical, psychological, and spiritual limitations. You feel that they can't live it anymore. They can live anymore. Um, or, I mean, their, their pains or sufferings are that big as much as that they feel like they can live anymore. Uh, you may think that I'm thinking of just some extreme cases uh, abnormal cases, but this is actually what the Bible says throughout the Bible. Because of our original sin, we fall into the life where we are confined with so many things. Uh, David suffered from his enemies. Job said he doesn't want to live, you know, anymore because of his pains. Uh, the Bible keeps telling us that in our life, human beings' lives is not easy. That's very uh, tough very difficult. Sometimes you just want to give up. Um, to human beings, those moments come already or in the future, you know, it'll come. The moments that we can't do anything, we can't control, we can't change, you know. But here is good news. Our God wants to save us from there. God wants to cry with us. God wants to take us from there. That is the message of the sermon today. Again, God wants to set us free. And um, I'd like to give you this message in the end, you know, let's trust in God, this God who works hard to deliver us from uh, those confinements. And uh, secondly, also let's take care of one another, you know, because we are all called to bring this good news to one another. Let's go to the scripture. In many parts of the Bible, we see that God constantly says that God wants to set us free. One of the well-known scriptures uh, is this, the, the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. Isaiah says, The Spirit of God came upon him and anointed him, and not just for his own sake, but to do these following things. He was called to do these following things. One, to bring good news to the oppressed. Two, to bind up the brokenhearted. Three, the, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. This is actually God speaking to people, but through the voice of Isaiah. This is God's message. God says, people, this is what I, your God, want to do for you, to give good news to the oppressed, to console the brokenhearted, and give freedom to captives and the prisoners. Interestingly, <clears throat> Excuse me. The same message is repeated in the New Testament. Uh, this time, this message is given through the voice of Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 20, Jesus enters the synagogue, stands up there, opens up the scripture. And at that time, it must be the uh, uh, Old Testament, Hebrew Bible, and he opens up. The Bible, and then it turns out, you know, the, the, uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, the first the passage we just have read came out, and he read it out loud there. He, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of a sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor. 
Well, we hear uh, there is a little subtle difference between the book of Isaiah we've seen earlier, the, the thing that we currently have in our Bible, and the virgins that the virgin that Jesus just read here. Even though they're the same scripture, the several things are a little different. For example, he uh, in his Jesus is a virgin, you know, the recovery of a sight to the blind was added. It was not there in the Isaiah um, that we have. But anyways, that's not a big, uh, that's not an important point. The important point is the same message was proclaimed uh, in different times. You know, first God gave this message to Isaiah a long time ago to help people understand the role of Isaiah, the prophet, the message and the message that God had for people. But God now let Jesus uh, read it again after about five, six hundred years later so that the contemporaries of Jesus can hear the same message, letting them to know that giving good news to the poor, releasing the captives, and liberating the oppressed are what God wants to do for them. Moreover, by making Jesus read it out loudly and by documenting the scene in the scripture, God is giving the same message not only to the contemporaries of Jesus, but also to our predecessors and to us living today and to our future generations. God wants to cry with us, give freedom to us, God constantly telling us uh, that that's what he wants to do. So before I move on to the next part, I'd like to highlight this, dear brothers and sisters, God wants to tell you, God wants to tell us, you know, uh, God wants to set us free from things that confine us physically, spiritually, mentally. Let's praise the Lord, our Savior, the merciful. The scriptures says that God calls people to do these ministries for God uh, instead uh, on behalf of God in the world. So God called Isaiah, God called Jesus, God called Moses. To, and God called many others, in, I believe, including you and me, too. But then here is a question. Who are they, the ones who need to hear this message? Who are the oppressed? Who are the oppressed back then? And who are the oppressed today? Who need to hear this good news? To, who, to whom do we need to deliver this message? To whom do we need to uh, bring God's comfort? You know, Who is crying and who is blind today? When this message was given to Isaiah, the audience was very clear. It was the Israelites who lost the country by Babylon and experienced the time of exile. In 587 BCE, Babylon destructed Judah, the southern kingdom of Israelites, and took the leaders of the society and their sons and daughters to Babylon as captives. And after 70 years, those captives could come back because Babylon fell down. Um, the last part of Isaiah, which ranges chapters of 56 to 66, um, you know, the chapter we have read was 61, so it belongs to this letter, the final part of Isaiah. It is believed that that part is, was written to those who came back from Babylon and wanted to rebuild Jerusalem and the whole country. So the message was clear, and the audience was particular. The oppressed were the Israelites who suffered under Babylon. Those brokenhearted were those who lost their families, lost their houses, lost their things. The captives and the prisoners to be liberated were not simply criminals in society. They were the captives uh, captivated by the Babylon from the war. They were those who were imprisoned by Babylon. So Isaiah, Isaiah his message was this. People of Israel, don't worry, our God called me to do this. You know, our God sent me to tell you good news. And God wants to comfort you and your family. And God will set you free. I'm sorry, if you hear my uh, son's voice, I'm sorry about that. I'm recording this at home, so that's something I can uh, control. So please understand. They're doing fine, by the way. Yeah, Alan and Ashton is doing well. The yeah, going back to the sermon. So when Isaiah preached this, 
you know, the, the message was clear, the audience was clear. When Jesus was reading it, people, well, of course, many people thought that the passage was read and it simply reminded them of the time of Isaiah, you know, time of the exile, the time of when God was so faithful to their ancestors five, six hundred years ago. But many other people also took it seriously and took it as the teaching of Jesus to them. Uh, and, and yes, Jesus also telling them he was anointed uh, to give you good news, you know, to uh, liberate you, to open your eyes to the blind. Now, and the context, let's see the context when Jesus read this message to them. Israelites now were under the Roman Empire. At that time, the audience of this message was those who became poor because of the Roman Empire's exploitation, lots of taxes, works, uh, those who were imprisoned by the Roman Empire. And plus, you know, the, he added the blind, you know, the oppressed who were socially marginalized. So the Israelites were those people, and this message of Jesus touched their hearts and made them cry. So here's our question. How about today? Who are the oppressed? And what are they oppressed with? In other words, who needs good news? Who needs God's consolation and liberation? I first think of those who are socially marginalized, being oppressed by today's neoliberal capitalist culture, those who don't have the powerful weapons than others. So they lose in this game, in the competition, and they lose, then they become marginalized. But they lose because they don't have enough weapons to fight this battle. They include the you know, the uneducated, the poor, the weak, the disabled, the foreigners, especially from those who are from, um, you know, weak, which co the countries that have a weaker political or uh, economic power, you know, also people of color, orphans, the low income workers, those, these people, you know, they are those who are often discriminated, ignored, given less chances and more unfairnesses due to the factors that they neither can choose or nor change. They oftentimes have indescribable anger and sadness deep inside them. You know, it's so unfair, you know, but, but they cannot even say it because their voices are too weak and no one's actually really listening to them. Uh, God, by the way, however, uh, wants to speak to them today. I think they're the audience. God says, I'll give you good news. I'll cry with you. I'll sit with you. I'll spend time with you. I'll make you be seen and heard in the kingdom of God, and you will never have it again. You will no longer have those sufferings on you. And secondly, I think of those who are heartbroken and brokenhearted. Today, you know, some of them are especially uh, those who are struggling psychologically, uh, especially with their because of their past memories, past bad memories, uh, their bad relationships. Uh, many people today have uh, psychological issues, although they have many, many good resources, but they are, for example, you know, they grow, grow up um, with lack of love and care, which results in some serious psychological issues. They may have a good academic background. They are maybe from rich family. There are maybe gold spoons uh, that indicate, you know, the, those who are very privileged since they were born because their parents, family have good resources, a uh, special term in Korea, maybe other cultures, they have similar terms. Their parents are well-educated, financially strong. However, these people, they are people who didn't feel like who, who don't feel like their life is fine. They feel like they didn't get enough love and support from their parents. So, so they, uh, they are so obsessed with it. They are suffering from it. Um, the parents were so strict, cold-hearted, and self-centered. Uh, those who grew up under such family culture uh, often, you know, likely become, easily become coward or their self-esteem becomes low. They become to seek others' approval and acceptance rather than having self-confidence 
although they have so many good things in hand, they neither recognize nor appreciate what they have in their hands, the values of them. Because they are obsessed with one thing that, for example, they didn't get love, enough love. So even though they have many, their soul is poor, they have many, you know, their spirit is not free. Their spirit is poor. To such people, God says, I'll set you free. God gives the message to them. That's the ones who need to hear this message. I'll give you good news. Good news is this, that you are my son, you are my daughter, and I love you more than anything else. You are my precious child that I wouldn't exchange with anything else. Thirdly, you know, other than those being a slave to social norms, being a slave to past memories or psychological issues, uh, I think of those who are under real physical oppression. They're the third groups of people, group of people I'm thinking of uh, when I'm thinking about the, the audience of this message today. Those who are suffering from abusive labor, those who are suffering from a bullying boss, for example, those who are suffering from abusive political power, those who have lost the freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of you know being, freedom of doing, those whose voices are being muted, those people, you know, and, and also I'm thinking of those people in Hong Kong, uh, those people in Tibet, Kashmir, uh, Palestine, and so forth. You know, I believe God's message is clearly this. Also, people who are experiencing oppression because of political power, because of a social situation, because of the social structure, you know. Now, those who are experiencing physical oppression, this is the message I want to give you. I, the Lord, I'll give you good news. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be comforted and satisfied. Your experience, your time, the oppression you have had today, these days, will go away. I'll set you free. Trust in God. God will set you free. Amen. So here I like to close my sermons with highlighting two things. First, God wants us to set us free. God wants to set us free. In the past, the fetters that people were confined were... Uh, related to the oppressive situations, you know, under Babylon or under Roman Empire, the suppressions they experienced uh, socio-politically. But today, the fetters that confine us are seem more various. Those include our inherent limitations, physical limitations, or uh, you know, life conditions, our obsessions about them, and many others. The psychological wounds that bother us throughout our lives our jealousy, a sense of inferiority, our Han, the, you know, the Korean way of expressing the, the, the suffering, excuse me, and even our restrained life situation under this COVID-19. Our God speaks to us today. I, I see all of you. I see all of these. I know, and I want to set you free. Second, to tell this good news to people. God has called some people and used them to speak for God. God called Moses to liberate the Israelites from the oppression, the slavery under Egypt. God called Isaiah to proclaim that God will set them free from the exile in Babylon. God called and sent Jesus to save not only the Israelites under the Roman Empire, but also all people in the world who are not free from sufferings. And now, I believe that God calls every one of us today to give this message to one another, and especially those who are socially marginalized and excluded, those who are brokenhearted, those who are psychologically broken, those who are physically suffering from power. To respond to our calling and to fulfill our mission successfully, we will need to look around and find where the people who need uh, good news are and with what they are captivated. Let's 
try to set free one another and let's send this message to the people in the world. Thank you.